So good afternoon and thank you for taking the time to join us for this webinar. We'll be beginning the session shortly. Uh, before we begin though, I'd just like to mention that you will need to use the chat section. Uh, look for the speech icon in your Zoom video interface near the bottom of the screen in case you want to share any questions. Uh, kindly make sure that the everyone option is selected so that we can receive your questions correctly. So my name is Karan Manral and I'll be your moderator for the webinar this afternoon. Um, first, I'd like to take a minute to thank you for the time that you spend uh, taken to join us for this session. Uh, what we want to do today is we want to explore the impact of changing trends in video collaboration for enterprise VC and their implications as we see them for the businesses who really rely on it. Uh, those businesses for whom it's a, an important tool to actually get specific uh, process, uh, business processes done or parts of their work done. So uh, the session is titled webinar uh, on future of the end, the future of enterprise VC. Uh, it's on changing trends in video collaboration and fe will feature Zoom video also in particular. We shall explore the changes that new generation video collaboration is bringing about because video collaboration as a space is something each of us has probably heard about and seen over the last decade and more at the very least. Uh, but it keeps continuing to evolve. And as the technologies evolve, we also see the ways in which people aspire to use them and actually use them changing, right? Uh, we should all discuss how these new technologies and these new trends will lead to smoother and more productive interactions across the streams of very varied sizes and in very different kinds of industries. The session will be led by a guest presenter, Samir Raje, who's the head for Zoom video communications in India. Samir has many, many years of experience in the collaboration space in particular. And for that reason, I think he comes with a very rich background of knowledge uh, about this space and an ability to sort of understand and share insights with us like few other people in the country. He shall speak a bit about how Zoom video caters to these evolving collaboration needs also. Uh, in the context of a modern sort of real-time enterprise. And I'm sure there'll be a lot for us to learn in this session. Uh, I'd like to invite Sami to take over and start off with the webinar. Thanks so much for giving us your time, Sami. You're welcome, Karan. And uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, actually, uh, you know, I, I, would, I would like to first and foremost uh, thank the entire Actors team for giving me this opportunity to present and talk about a, a particular topic, which which I love, and and the reason for that is uh, you know uh, as as Karan mentioned, I've I've been part of this collaboration world in this country for for a very long time, and and if I have to really talk about my memories, I mean it it, it has been like the days when uh, I used to sell maybe audio conferencing services at and some ridiculous price point. And if I talk about that price point, probably some of you will fall down from the chair to an extent where today we are seeing a, a three year old kid on a road, uh, making a video call to his near and dear ones or even friends and families. So it's been a remarkable journey for us uh, in the country. And I think, uh, uh, as, as we are going ahead, we see more and more acceptance to video technology. We are seeing more and more acceptance or rather a uh, need of video technology in our day-to-day -day lives. And this is the same impact that we are bringing in uh, or happening in, in the enterprise world as well. So if, if I have to talk about uh, today's scenario in, in particular, if we look at the businesses today, uh, a majority of businesses today are uh, geographically spread out and needless to say their customers uh, even the employees are in various part of the parts of the world uh, different countries uh, be different cities or uh, even uh, you know with different offices within the same city and with this i think if the biggest challenge that brings in is how to bring in operational efficiencies the second thing what we are seeing is the way we are doing our businesses 
by that we are seeing you know a lot of new edge organizations and for that matter even a lot of old legacy organizations shifting the way they are doing businesses they are looking for contractual work they are looking for you know outsourcing certain components of their uh, you know business management or even for that matter some small trivial works resulting in a lot of uh, uh, you know a distance resulting into a lot of uh, uh, cost related issues and time management related issues if we talk about city like bangalore itself which recently got voted for its uh, you know uh, nuances of travel and traffic related issues uh, to be the worst city in the world uh, and i particularly spent like 3 hours commuting one from one destination to another in bangalore just two weeks back uh, it brings a nightmare to the to the companies and for the employees to travel definitely this is this is the new norm being geographically spread but then again having a uh, uh, distance to cover that's a major concern now if i have to look at some of the numbers brought in by uh, some of the leading uh, consulting agencies across the globe while we are working remote working and telecommunicating is the norm currently it's just going to go up from here today what it could be at 50 to 60% is going to go to 77 to 80 80 90% and uh, you know freelancing and the contractual work is also going to go up because organizations and managements are looking to keep cost in check so these are some of the numbers which uh, some of the consulting firms have really come up with so if if i have to sit back and look at where we were from a few years back to where we are in terms of business and look at what the ask today is it's really being up there there was a time when it was simple you could hop on a flight or hop on to a cab and be at your customer's place or be at your vendor's place shake hands do the business and get on with it obviously that's the best way of communication and that's that's one of the you know being there is is the norm but since we are looking at spike in traffic spike in uh, all unwanted things uh, it are happening and resulting into uh, escalation of costs i think video is the next next best thing and as we progress ahead i think video is becoming more and more uh, part of our lives as i try to say uh most of us if we are traveling today we end up making a video call back home when we are sitting at the airport and we get a wifi access and we definitely call back home saying that hey i'm fine or at least uh, you know look at each other's faces and you know remember what we are missing so video definitely is uh, is the in thing and the, the next best thing of uh, being in there however yes agree that uh, video will not replace in person or physical meetings 100% yes but even if we are able to replace it like 95% 90% or even 80% that is what we are looking for so let us look at the journey so far and uh, what has been happening and where does it take us from here on so again i have to draw an analogy of uh, you know some of the days back then uh, all of you would remember you know there used to be two desks on on the uh, two phones on a desk uh one an ip phone another a tdm phone and uh, there was a hardware based video conferencing room and then you know that there was a instant messaging chat application or something of that sort or you would have your mobile phones uh, i'm not sure how many of you seen the pager and erstwhile uh, communication where you know you used to pick up the phone and use a dial pad to dial a number but if you look at that we started off from there and today the world is emerging towards a uh, a platform which encompasses all these solutions you really don't see two different devices on a on a desk anymore you really don't see those kind of video rooms anymore where you have a hardware based h323 or a sip based system where you can cannot really log on or or you cannot really make a, a platform agnostic or device agnostic video conference so from there we've come to a stage where it's a modern video communication platform where you know everything comes under one single umbrella it really doesn't matter whether you are on a phone mobile device tablet or a laptop this brings in of course its own challenges uh, you know when we started off with ip for telephony separately we started off with mobile telephony and uh, uh, pstn telephony the buyers went on buying the solution separately they had a separate solution for mobility uh voice messaging 
collaboration, oh, customer collaboration is extremely critical and this platform needs a lot of uh, importance. I'm going to deploy XYZ solution. You know what, I have a vision for unified communication and collaboration, so I'm going to deploy this solution. You know what, I want, my marketing team wants to do a webinar and hence I want to go ahead with this particular solution. The result was a disjointed solution purchased by the decision makers and deployed for each particular use. And that was the time, you know, it, it went on for quite some time. And in turn, the buyers failed to realize what are the challenges faced by an end user. The end user, on the other hand, was have, getting frustrated because to start a meeting, he would have to figure out, oh, how does this interface work? Now I'm joining a webinar. This has a different interface. Oh, now I'm joining a meeting from a conference room. This has a different interface. And you know what? I want to start my content sharing. Please, God, tell me how does it work? You know, the, the buyer never really realized what is the end user frustration. And this went on for quite some time. And the result was very simple. You know, end users put their foot down and started buying things on their own. And that caused even more frustrations and problems for both the organization, that is the buyer organization, as well as the end user organization. So let us look at where we are trending today and where we are heading towards. If you look at the current trend, uh, as I said, you know, end user is looking to buy and bring their own devices. And same is the case with the, with the buyer where they want to bring their own codex. Uh, Similar is the technology for huddle rooms or conference rooms. Gone are the days when we were talking about, uh, uh, you know, a video conferencing hardware-based device, which was be set for the CEO or the CXOs and other users won't have access. Today, a sales rep or even a junior most employee in the organization is saying, hey, I want to have an access to a conference room. Why can't I have a conversation with my vendor or with my customer in a simple privacy? And that room doesn't have to have leather clad uh, you know, great chairs and a big room. I just need a huddle room which, which can seat, sit, seat or occupy two or three people, that's all. Or maybe a group of people who want to ideate together and they want to just have a conference room or a room which can seat maybe two or three people, that's all. Similarly, deployments are moving to cloud. And I'm, I think everybody will agree to the fact that cloud is becoming and gaining more and more importance in our lives. Hardware-based room systems are, get, are on the decline. Your hardware is getting end of life, and plus uh, newer technologies are coming on board, so hardware-based room systems are really on the decline. And come to this, the millennials, the new age workers, you know. I've got some new millennials in my team. It's so difficult to understand them because they, they end up you know, bringing their own technology and they don't even need to learn what, what collaboration solution is. You know, if you have to talk to a millennial about, you know, an old phone or how to make a phone call or call up their customer, the first question would be, why is there no video on it? Hey, all of us use Uber and Ola probably for booking the cabs. And the same goes on with millennials when they, when they are using or when they're chatting to their customers, vendors, or anybody else, they need video as a part of it. And same is happening in terms of uh, working. The work culture is changing where people earlier used to work in silos. They are more and more working in teams and need to collaborate together. And these teams could be geographically spread out as we discussed earlier. Let's look at where we are heading towards in the future. We are talking about a journey, journey of unified communication. I mean, everybody talks about unified communications, but what started off from voice, as we saw with a PSTN or an IP based telephone has today now moved to video and it's now moving towards even more complex environment of collaboration and integration with different kind of applications. So if I'm using Salesforce, can I click a button and get into a video conference and share my dashboard with my sales manager who is probably in a different city? Or if I am in a video meeting, can I just at a click of a button start sharing my presentation or, or some other application? Hey, I am a bank and I am servicing my NRI customers, can I, can my NRI customer uh, click a button and get into a video meeting with my uh, head of department? You know, questions are galore, but the integration and the details of nitty gritties at the back end for the technology team to manage are humongous. Mobile video is growing rapidly. As I said, I mean, each one of us, even on the, uh, you know, sitting at a uh, airport or even at a bus station today, 
we see so many people getting into a video call rather than just an audio call. For all that matters, the, the security guard of my apartment down there, sitting there half of the time, he's on a video call with his, his, his wife or somebody beloved from his family back home in UP or Bihar. Same is the case everywhere today. Video is getting more and more acceptance. And we need to understand how this needs to be in, implemented for the enterprise uh, corporations. Last but not the least, PC as a service is becoming inevitable part. Before it was uh, purchase the devices, deploy them, you invest a huge amount, and you know what? Pray that you are able to recover it. Pray that your employees in the organization, your CIO, CXO, start using it, and just hope for the best that your CFO doesn't come back and ask you that what is the amount you have invested and what kind of uh, journey you are, or the cost you've recovered so far out of it. So, to summarize, if you have to talk about the trends that are driving the change. First and foremost, virtual teams. We've got teams in various cities. I deal with teams in Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, and I'm sure same would be the case with you. Today, even the IT team, technology team, uh, procurement team, sales, everybody is geographically spread out. We have virtual teams and all of these virtual teams need to collaborate with each other. And guess what? More and more travel restrictions coming in, more and more uh, cost escalations coming into picture what it effectively means is that you know these people may not end up meeting each other every time rise of huddle rooms as i said before every small employee there was a day when there, there used to be a dedicated lift or an elevator to go to a cio's cabin or a cxo level floor in a particular organization and there would be some good conference rooms out there where you could have a meeting and so those were the only places where video conferencing rooms were available. Today, every floor has numerous huddle rooms where people can come together and share their ideas, share their thoughts, or probably interact with their customers, vendors, partners across the globe. And that conference room need not be too huge. It can be just a two-seater or a three-seater room. And that's the better utilization of your real estate. Finally, Video quality and reliability matters. There was a time when, again, uh, you know, the bandwidth costs were very high, and uh, you know, we were still a bandwidth star country. We we never used to have those kind of bandwidths, and all the video solutions that that were available in the market used to require a significant amount of bandwidth. Today, the cost of bandwidth it has gone down, but the video quality still matters. Just imagine the frustration if you're talking to, uh, to your customer and your video quality suffers. Just imagine if I would have been talking to you and my video quality would not have been good. So what are we looking at? What is the need of the R? We understood, we started off from, uh, you know, how the businesses today are geographically spread, what technology we started off with, what is the technology that we are heading towards, what is the current market trend, and uh, you know what is what is going to be in the near future that we envisage and what is driving these change so what is the need of the business are today if you have to really look at that the need today is to consolidate your communication services well it's easier said than done we all know that improve the end user experience well, how many of us have really implemented those great collaboration solutions and then realize that, you know, the end user comes and says, nothing doing, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. We've heard that, right? And video communication as a mission critical. Now, well, this is an extremely important thing, but again, we don't really think about it. I think this, this particular cube on my slide should have been red and not yellow because I think in... In today's world, BCP is one of the most critical aspects that a business tends to overlook. Uh, we tend to forget that times today are bad. Uh, anything can happen today in this world which can literally force an employee to either work from home or put some restrictions on travel or put some restrictions in doing the way we are doing business normally. As a technology person, as an IT person, we tend to oversee this. And the result is that we do not empower our users. We try to 
you know, okay, business is going on. We don't need something as to fall back on. But when critical time as today comes up, that's when we realize the importance of a video or communication, which is really a mission critical aspect. And then when we, we all have the workforce shifts, right? We have somebody in the US and somebody in, in Philippines or, or in Australia and uh, somebody in UK and then coordinating with all these three zones, time zones is, is really a nightmare. I don't know how many of you are going through it, but I'm going through it right now. It's, and it's a real nightmare because you know what? I work three shifts. I really work three shifts and it becomes so difficult to manage that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, you tend to fall asleep when you're uh, when you're doing nothing. So it's really difficult. And as, as a technology team, we need to ensure that the end users are empowered to work through this. And as as a central team or the or again, the the team enabling this needs to ensure that, you know, there is a central console, there is a central management and the central uh, empowerment to and look after and management of these users. And last but not the least, I mean, everybody talks about this, right? So seeking a trusted advisor, uh, you know, and, and Actus Technologies is one of the fine examples that I can share here who, is, who have been in this industry for a significant amount of time and definitely act as a more of a trusted advisor for their customers and partners rather than anything else. And, and you know, that is what everybody is looking at as to who is the trusted advisor that you can actually guide and uh, you know tell you about what is the right solution for you which is the solution which will meet your requirements and not something which is uh, you know you're, you're you're going in for something which is probably just about there but you're not happy with it well there are a lot of organizations who have tried and attempted doing this consolidation stuff and uh, you know what, if I have to talk about again, uh, a little bit about this, of these logos that you see on the slide, I have been personally associated with more than eight of these logos, uh, driving sales or working for them or doing something. And all in this Indian market or in the Asia market, more or less, uh, more than eight logos. And, you know, it's a story that we build that, okay, you start with different silos and then consolidate and at the end of the day you would have a complete communications platform but you know what the challenges still remain and challenges are there they continue to be there and uh, uh, you know we, we just don't seem to overcome that and given so the indian scenario it is even more complicated uh, given the restrictions from TRAI and DOT regarding the IP and PST and mixing, this still continues to be a major challenge. So if we have to look at the business challenges, uh, modern offices having you know open workspaces and multiple locations, dispersed teams, and the need of media for everybody. Uh, need to innovate and speed up. That's another issue because if we look at organizations while they are moving at uh, you know, great speed. Again, the innovativeness, yeah, when you get new people on board, people come with, hey, hey, I'm using a MacBook at my residence and why are you giving me a desktop or, or, uh, or, or you know, a, a PC or a laptop which is with an i3 processor. I don't want that. I'm using a MacBook 13 inch with an i7 processor at my place and I need best of the breed solutions and hardware for use. Uh, employees, consumer products drive increased expectation as I was talking about, iPhones, iPads, uh, these are driving increased expectations. And the same is the case with softwares and applications as well. Uh, not to mention, you know, may, most of us today, if we step out of either of our homes or offices, the first thing that we do is fire the Uber or Ola app and to book a cab to go from one place to another. Well, if you're going a short distance and really not a formal work and, you know, it's, it's just so, so then probably we can jump into a, a black and yellow or a, a Kali Pili, as we call it in Mumbai and, uh, and a, a rickshaw in, in, um, in any part of our country. But again, that haggling, that may, the discussing and the meter and the getting turned down by half of the rickshaw guys or the taxi guys is really put off. So we, tend to press that Uber app button or an Ola app button and book a cab for ourselves. Well, just imagine there was a day when, uh, you know, we didn't have that. And that was not long back. That was just not around 10 years back. So that's, that's 
that's the expectation from the employees. Uh, again, uh, if you talk about all this technology, if you talk about advancement in today's world, let's look at the ground reality in the country again. The ground reality still is that we still have challenges in terms of connectivity, in terms of uh, bandwidth. And I wouldn't say that other countries don't have it, they do. Uh, if, if, you're in, if you've experienced in uh, US as well, they are bandwidth sometimes, you know, it just keeps on, uh, you have the circle going around and around telling you that, you know, you're both in progress. So the ability to switch to a, uh, uh, you know, old legacy system or an audio phone call or a non-video technology should be at a touch of a button. And that's, that's one of the biggest challenge in our country, I would say. And, and the collaboration requirement to, you know, across every team. Uh, talking about IT organization, I mean, support and management, I think this is the biggest challenge. And, uh, you know, bring your own device and architecture leads to governance issues. I mean, we've seen that. We've seen the people bringing in MacBook and there was a time when it was banned. Okay, no, no MacBooks, no iPads allowed in the system, allowed to be brought in the network and it will not be permitted. And, uh, you know, support in terms of raising cases, issues. There will be challenges when it's a service delivery, there will be issues. And how is the response for that? Finally, but not the least, of course, price and affordability of the solution is, is, a, is a big question mark for, for the IT organizations. So when, an I, when, a, when a buyer buys a solution, they typically look for all these, when an employee is buying it, uh, he doesn't care, he or she doesn't care. And, and as far as businesses are concerned, I mean, the direction that businesses are going there, that is a third, uh, absolutely different direction altogether. So what's the solution are we talking about? We spoke about, you know, all these things, amazing things that are happening in this world. We are talking about collaboration. We are talking about, uh, you know, uh, old legacy system and going to a position where everything is consolidated with the ability to fall back into a non-technical or uh, or in a challenged situation how do we do it so what's the solution for this that's where we come into picture i would say uh, so our founder mr eric s yuan when he moved out of cisco and uh, decided to start off his own organization uh, the first uh, the vision was to start a frictionless video first unified communication platform Video comes first above all, above everything, and it's a frictionless uh, experience. That's what the thought process was. And this is where our legacy or our strength lies. It's a, it's a single easy to use platform, and we're talking about 100% cloud native hardware agnostic approach, and you know, uh, fantastic functionality, and integrations into multiple applications and ability to develop more integrations. And we, I will talk about it a little bit as we, as we progress ahead. So this is how it was developed. It was, deliver, it, was, it was created to deliver happiness to the customers. And happiness is not a buzzword in, um, in Zoom. It's, it comes from our customer. So our customers usually uh, you know, say that it's, it's delivering happiness. It, it just works. So these are, these are some of the words which came from our customer and these are not taglines created by us. So just a little bit an overview of uh, what Zoom does for you. If you look at uh, as what I spoke about before, it's a video first cloud native uh, you know, solution with an architecture which is based on multimedia route kind of uh, technology. Uh, I can go into details of it, but uh, you know, you're free to reach out to Actus or to us directly, and we will be happy to you know, uh, walk you through that. And on that sits the platform, which encompasses the different aspects of collaboration. Uh, it, it writes from the meetings, instant messaging, phone, and video webinar. And this is across the various devices, be it desktop, laptop, tablets or mobile phone. Moving on to real estate, what we spoke about in terms of conference rooms, uh, in terms of old legacy H323 or SIP connected devices, even your displays and signages across uh, screens and uh, lobbies and rooms, etc. So this basically sums up the 
the platform which covers uh, the different pain areas that different businesses may have. And to this, or, or in addition to this, what uh, we have is the integration into various third party applications and technology and hardware uh, partners, you know, these integrations are readily available in the market and we also have ability or we train or we share details where you can create your own applications based on the APIs that we have shared. So a little bit on the Zoom uh, cloud architecture to talk about. Uh, it's globally distributed. It's not centralized. Uh, multimedia routing, which I spoke about, uh, which is cloud based routing and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very composited kind of client architecture uh, based on uh, uh, technology, multi-bit rate encoding and real-time application layer quality of service, which actually monitors the bandwidth at your area. It actually monitors the RAM utilization and CPU utilization at your area. And not only that, it will, when, when as a central IT technology person, you will be able to monitor this real-time and also pull out these status and share with your end user and say that, look, this is the problem. You probably had 10 windows open on your laptop, which were consuming the RAM and the CPU, result of which you are not having a good experience. Our recommendation is please shut down all the windows and the instances on your laptop and reboot your laptop and start using it. You know, that's that kind of information is readily available to you at hand. And that is the reason why video uh, Zoom is so strong in terms of video delivery. So to summarize, uh, communications platform, if you look at the right hand side, it's, it's the entire communication platform which we spoke about from meetings to instant messaging and chat presence. Uh, the next is audio, which is in terms of uh, your IP telephony as well as normal PSTN phone. We spoke about falling back on the old legacy technology in case of uh, you know, bandwidth starvation or some other technical issues. Similarly, we are coming up with a Zoom phone, which is yet to come into India, but we, we are going ahead live in a lot of other countries. And, uh, you know, it's, it's work in progress for India, where Zoom phone is basically a PBX on the cloud and has a lot more capabilities than your normal phone would have. Also talking about video webinars where you can host your online seminars using Zoom platform. On the left-hand side, if you look at the conference rooms and spaces, we talk about your real estate in terms of your conference rooms, in, in terms of your digital signage, in terms of your displays, in terms of your lobbies, uh, passages, or your you know, uh, reception areas. We take care of almost all of them. And the bottom most uh, arc is about the API mobile SDKs and the marketplace, which we have more than 140 applications right now in our uh, marketplace. Uh, integrations like uh, you know Zendesk and uh, uh, Google and uh, uh, we have with Microsoft and so on so forth uh, Salesforce so these are all readily available and we also share APIs for our platform whereby you can develop any application so we spoke about let's say a bank who wants to have their own application for their let's say NRIs or HNIs where who they can click on a button and get into a video meeting with the product manager or the head of department. Well, we can share our APIs to integrate our uh, uh, Zoom platform into your application. So these are some of the applications which are readily available with integrations in our marketplace, uh, more, more than 200 workflow integrations and marketplace apps are close to about 140 plus. It's more than meetings, as I spoke about, uh, be it team meetings to chat, instant messaging, collaboration to webinars and, you know, town halls to uh, onboarding, learning development, etc. And this, if you, if you look at this entire uh, wheel out here, uh, encompassing of internal, external, as well as the large meeting platforms, uh, that's where I would say that your entire this takes care of your entire bcp this takes care of entire business continuity for you you could be in any part of the world you could tomorrow decide to you know work from home or you could decide to shut down your offices but your business will still continue because uh, you have this platform where your employees can you know use a, maybe a simple home internet connection to work from home still be in that virtual meeting with the customer partner or internals and continue to host or you know run business as usual 
So we summarize this. We we all discuss this and Forbes Insights and Zoom. Uh, you know the survey that we did just endorses this fact that your employees need video communication. Uh, the result of our survey says that 92% has a positive impact on performance if if they use video. 82% says that you know it creates a greater sense of trust, and 91% say that it creates a greater sense of engagement. Uh, you know, I always keep on asking my partners, and uh, if I can pull up Karan over here, you know, I always keep on asking Karan, hey, Karan, why don't you turn on your video, man? And, you know, now he's started turning his video every time he meets me. So, uh, you know, this is this is this is a fact that what we've seen and we, we have experienced it in our daily life. I, I wouldn't say that Forbes or our survey needs any uh, validation because each one of us have experienced it personally. But this is extremely critical because, you know, this comes from our customer survey, which says that the companies which switch to Zoom, they experience an 85% increase in video usage. And that's the amazing power of Zoom that we bring. A little bit about our customer base and, uh, you know, these are global customers. Uh, and to, just to give you an insight, in India, we started off our operations around uh, uh, six months back, I would say, while I have been there almost uh, close to a year now, but it took some time to get things operational and moving, etc. These are some of the customers. We've got a lot of customers in India, thanks to our partners uh, like Actors, who have been doing some fantastic work and the fantastic team that we have in the country. A little bit about uh, Zoom uh, for those who may have not heard about it, which I think would be a little bit... Uh, um, uh, you know, not right to say, but a little bit summary is Nasdaq listed company, and in Q4 we clocked close to about 189 million dollars of revenue, which is a substantial uh, year-on-year growth and a quarter-on-quarter growth. We are close to about 2,500 employees across the globe, and uh, you know, uh, we are aiming to be a billion-dollar company this year. That's our aim, but yeah, we are trying our best to be there. And you know what, we brought in more than 300 plus features in just one single year. And intend to bring in a lot more, we hear our customers and we bring in what the customers really want. So what makes Zoom unique? I would summarize, I would not talk about this, but I would just say one and only one thing, that is the DNA and the culture. We want to keep our customers happy, we want to keep our partners happy. And delivering that customer happiness is our end goal. I was just talking to somebody else uh, sometime back, I think an hour back or something, and I said, you know, nothing else matters but the customer happiness for us. And as I said, it's it's not a buzzword. That's our DNA, that's our culture, and that's what our customers are talking about. And to back it up, of course, it is it is a fantastic work done by our product and technology teams by bringing in an amazing technology and architecture and a platform, which is able to withstand it. I don't know if you know, but here's, here's a thought uh, for you. Zoom actually works with video as well as audio, that is VOIP, not PSN, with up to 45% packet loss on your internet. 45%. Just think about it. And with that, I would like to hand it over back to Karen and Ramesh to take it further. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Samir. So we've got, uh, we moved to Q&A and uh, we've got a few questions. I'll just read out to them. What are the trends in how people are accessing videos in terms of devices and the locations? Sure. I think uh, the trend is, uh, um, is quite, today is, is more towards uh, being device agnostic. Uh, by that, I mean that, you know, uh, people are more and more bringing in their own devices. Point number one, organizations are allowing BYOD. And it's no longer that old legacy system, uh, video conferencing only. Today, I'm not sure if how many of you realized, but I'm not in a video conferencing room. I am in a small huddle room with my PC, and a small miniature web camera attached to my PC. That's the demand today. That's how video conferences are happening. And that's that's where video consumption is on the rise. Thank you, Samir. Uh, I'll move on to next question. 
what new features would you consider indispensable in terms of enabling collaboration through meetings uh i think one of the key areas is uh, and this is this comes from some of the interactions that we've been having uh, and one of the key area is uh, you know optimum utilization of uh, real estate because when the video conferencing rooms are set up uh, it is often observed that the utilization of the rooms and the infrastructure and the devices out there is not optimum so what typically would happen is if you have a good large conference room for let's say 10 people uh, you know uh, it either doesn't get utilized or even if it is getting utilized it would be utilized by two or three people and as a result of which uh, it's really not uh, optimal use so features to track that something something like that we are trying to bring in we are we are on the verge of uh, announcing some ai capabilities and the, some of them are already available features so that is one thing the second thing is again in terms of uh, moving and so we spoke about collaboration we spoke about collaboration in terms of uh, you know bringing in different platforms of uh, devices uh, ip pst and everything together it would i think go ahead and bring in more technologies together in terms of uh, managing the devices managing uh, infrastructure like maybe air conditioners or maybe you know screens and iot and so on and so forth so i would say those are more and more advanced technology features which are coming and being asked for and i think that is where this entire technology will head towards great so i have one more question you talked about the importance of video so uh, the customer wants to know what business application are you seeing businesses moving completely to video well that's a fantastic question and i think uh, the there are there are certain key areas which are moving to video and uh, i think it's extremely critical that those businesses um, you know follow that uh, the first and foremost is the hr interviewing process that is moving big time to video that is the first thing because of couple of things um, first and foremost ability to uh, you know remotely interview point number one and only meet those candidates which are shortlisted thereby reducing the hiring time and second thing is uh, you know where it and bpo companies especially have on their fingers where somebody else has come for an interview and somebody else has appeared for the test so for compliance reasons having video as important part of hr the second aspect that we've seen uh, moving on to uh, video big time is the training aspect which is online training and uh, today the schools and virtual learning programs are taking this big time and i think more and more universities and schools are moving towards that the third and the final critical component which is moving big time to video is uh, the uh, seminars or uh, uh, you know the the big events they are being replicated on on a virtual front and are becoming more and more virtual for cost reasons and not only cost reasons but also for ease of use and get, giving a better roi so i think these are the three important business uh, uh, aspects which are moving to a virtual platform or to video platform as well uh thank you samir karan over to you i'm done with q and a's right so i hope that was interesting for all of you uh, it's all we have time for today um i would just uh, like to thank samir for all the information he shared with us all the insights he shared with us um, you know as he's mentioned eventually all of us are looking for technologies or tools or ways in which to improve how smoothly i guess business runs right that's really what we are looking for at the core of it and uh, the sort of power of video to act as the lubricant for a lot of our growth or how our business processes run is obviously something that all of us are paying a lot of attention to uh thank you again so much samir and thanks for all those insights thank you to all of you who've taken the time to join the session today uh please let us know if you'd like to you know suggest certain topics to us uh, there is an address on the screen that you can write to uh, and tell us uh, about topics that you are interested in also 
happy to have feedback and suggestions on how we can improve these sessions further. Thank you again, everybody, and good day. Thank you all. Have a good day, please.